light of Christmas. This is a time, I'm not going to say a hard lesson, but uh, there's so much to unpack here. We're not going to scratch the surface. Thanks, sir. We're not going to scratch the surface uh, of it, that's for sure. Uh, but we're going to try our best. The light of Christmas, if you would and could, please stand with me uh, to the reverence of God's Word. We're going to be in John chapter 1, starting 1 through 5, and then we're jumping over to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2 reads, be therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Amen. And then verses 6 through 14 of Ephesians chapter 5, let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers of with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are reproved, are made manifest by the light. For whosoever doeth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. All right, you can be seated. After some related scriptures, uh, I'm going to take you. Uh, we know that was, Paul Paul wrote that to the church uh, of Ephesus. So I want you to see how closely related uh, to the church of Colossae. Turn with me to Colossians chapter uh, 3. I'm going to read the whole chapter. As you're looking for it, I'm going to go ahead and start. Colossians, for some related scripture about being the light of Christmas. Amen. How Christ is that light and He lives through us and shines through us. Colossians chapter 3, starting verse 1. And I'm actually only going to read to 17. If ye then be risen with Christ. Remember, we're crucified with Christ. And we died to self to raise, to walk in the newness of life. Amen. That settles baptism right there. Amen. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. This scripture, all this here is very self-explanatory. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. That's an appearing. That's the rapture. That's the, yeah. uh, I just had a lady who ran into at McDonald's and, and I tried to give her a try. And she said, no. She said, I don't need that. She said, I get sermons all the time. I guess she's referring to herself as a preacher. And then their very next response was, and I don't believe in the rapture. This book clearly teaches the rapture. Amen. Where he's going to appear in the clouds and we'll be yeah. called up to meet him in the clouds. Amen. Amen. He does come back with a thousand year millennial reign. Anyway, verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil conspicience, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Do you see the, uh, the, the relation here? In which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lie not one to another, seeing that ye put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, forgiveness, right? Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, 
That, I believe, is one of the most important things for a Christian to put on, to be long-suffering, amen, with one another. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a choir against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. <laughs> Amen. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. It's so simple. We've got to Christ we know is the light of Christmas, and that's what we're surrounding. Uh, this lesson is surrounded around today, but how Christ lives in us. Amen. And this right here in Colossians simply shows us the old man is dead and the new man is supposed to shine. Amen. That was Colossians chapter 3. Uh, amen. So our lesson here, I'm actually going to turn because I'm going to read some extra screen. Not right now, but once we get into Ephesians chapter 5 and miss some verses, I'm going to uh, want to read. Amen. The golden text it says here for this week is uh, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I wrote this down. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. Watch this. Full of grace and mercy. They said we beheld him. They said we touched of him. We felt of him. How many celebrities can you get that close to? Celebrities. They started to get heady, high-minded, amen. All of a sudden they got bodyguards. You can't club close to them at all. Uh, you can't get close to them. Some of them shaking their hands. Some might every now and then when the cameras are rolling, amen, and those type of things. But this God, Jesus Christ, our creator, their creator, them celebrities, he was so full of grace that men, women, boys and girls, children came and sat on his lap. Harlots came to him, tax collectors, sinful people come to him and he allowed them to touch of him, to fill of him. Who had touched the hem of my garment? Who touched me? I felt virtue leave me. God came to save sinners. He's full of grace, amen. Why? He's the light. You and I got to do the same thing, Amen. You and I have got to do the same thing. We've got to be a friend to sinners. Amen. We don't partake in their sin. We don't do them things. But our light has got to shine to the outside world. Amen. And friend them that the light might shine. That's what Jesus did. You can't disprove it. Jesus did. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Amen. All right. We're getting to the questions. Question number one says, why did John begin his gospel with the same words that began the book of Genesis? We, we know the book of Genesis says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, right? John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So why did John begin his gospel with the same words that begin the book of Genesis? He was emphasizing Jesus Christ. <coughs> Jesus Christ and how uh, Jesus is, uh, was pre-existent. Amen. Uh, so in the beginning, we didn't have the name of Jesus. We didn't get that to the New Testament, and he told Joseph that his name shall be Jesus. Amen. And uh, I'm trying to run into what I'm preaching tonight. Amen. My, my mind's wanting to chase it. Uh, but um, so he's stressing here that in the beginning, the Old Testament, uh, you have in the New Testament Jesus. That's who he was. Uh, that's why I took my Bible, and I put them letters right on. That's a bold statement to take an infallible word of God and to just slap the name of Jesus on the front of it. But it speaks, this book is about Jesus Christ, amen. So, uh, so John's reasoning here is to emphasize that Jesus is God. Amen. He was fully God, yet fully, uh, uh, fully man. A lot of people have a hard time. There's not been one uh, a babe in Christ, so to say, or, or a young preacher, or someone that's asked me about this incarnate Christ. Amen. Pre-incarnate. All throughout the Old Testament, you find them. Melchizedek. Well, I remember some years ago, I was digging in my Bible on my own between jobs, and I read over there about Melchizedek, and Holy Ghost said, remember in Genesis, I went to Genesis, and I searched, and I searched, and I finally found the name Melchizedek. And uh, the man of God preached it that night and bared witness to what God had given me. Uh, but the Melchizedek was a pre-incarnate Christ. What do you mean? Amen. Jesus didn't come to this earth until he was born and conceived of the Holy Ghost in the womb of Mary. Correct. As like as unto man's sinful flesh. 
but he's God. He can jump in and out of dispensation. God can do anything he wants to. He's God. It says, in the beginning, God created. What nothing made that wasn't made by him. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, uh, and forever. Amen. Uh, that's Hebrews 13, 8. Uh, so we, we find that John is wanting to emphasize that Jesus Christ is most definitely God. And there is a difference between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He's three and one. I know I can't get off on that, but if you had three cups, amen, and you had one pitcher of water, and you put the water in three different cups, it's in three different things, but it's the same exact water. Amen. God says, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. There's some things you and I just got to take out of faith because that's what it is. It's faith. Amen. And one day that faith shall be turned into reality. Well, preacher, the Bible says nobody has seen God. Well, a lot of people seen God. Jesus was God. To see him in his fullness, to see him when all things come together, when all this is said and done in the, the thousand-year millennial ring and the great white throne and the new heaven and the new earth, we're going to see something we've never seen before. Amen. The things you feel is going to come together with the things that uh, some people want seen. Amen. And God the Father that we've never seen or felt. Amen. But you have felt the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, people have seen Jesus Christ. We have portraits of what people portray as to be Jesus. I'm living in the church age. I'm not interested in that stuff. Amen. Uh, but it will come together. So he's emphasizing by putting the Old Testament together with the New Testament. You have pre-incarnate Christ all through the Bible. How people don't uh, accept it, I don't know. Some people believe different, but it's all through there. Joshua, uh, when he said, I'm the one, he took his shoes off. That's a pre-incarnate Christ that stood before him. Uh, Moses in the, in the burning bush. Who was that? It was God. The Bible, he, Hebrew says, for our God is a consuming fire. Then you find Manoah, uh, 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 Samson's mother and father and said they gave sacrifice to him and it sucked it all up and just took it and uh, they said we have seen God that was a pre-incarnate Christ it was times where God uh, was uh, manifested into this world doing what he does but not as the baby Jesus as the Christ uh, to die as savior for the sin of the world amen he was showing that he's the pre-existent one he always has been and he always will be. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So there is most definitely um, pre-incarnate Christ, but he did not become the Savior he, uh, 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 and, and to die for the sins of the world and take on man's sinful flesh. Amen. Like as unto our sinful flesh. And we can get into all that about the virgin birth and, and we can prove all that. But he didn't do that until he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You cannot have the New Testament without the Old Testament and you cannot understand the Old Testament without the New Testament. And I'm telling you, if you've got a copy of the 1611 King James Bible, you need absolutely nothing else. You, They have history. Josephus is a good one that can dig into this. But if you have this, let the Bible answer itself. You will never have a question in this Bible that won't prove itself within the pages of of the Bible. Amen. It's all there. Amen. Praise God. It speaks for itself. It answers for itself. It's all there. You cannot disprove this book. You can disprove anything else. If it's outside that 1611 King James Bible, I've spent some years doing it. Amen. You can disprove it, but this Bible here, you will not find a flaw to it. Amen. Praise Amen. God. All right. Uh, I don't know where all that come from, but Question two says, why would both Jews and Gentiles understand that God was connecting Jesus with God the Father? So how would the Jews and Gentiles alike, when we read John chapter 1, how would we know uh, what John here, uh, what John is trying to connect Jesus with God? Because of the word, word. He says, in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So all throughout the Old Testament, we just spoke of it, and in the beginning, in Genesis 1-1, they would understand that there he's relating, that that God is Jesus Christ. And it's the same for the New Testament with the word uh, logos. Logos uh, meant a lot of different things about thoughts being, being given out and, and collected and 
um, but it, it has to deal with beginnings, amen, in the universe. So they would understand too that John is saying that Jesus is everything. Jesus is God is what they were emphasizing by that one simple word, word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It means it's God breathed. It means if it's in the confounds of this 1611 King James Bible, then it is God inspired. God give it to you and I. It's inspired of God. Amen. Amen. You also find in Psalms chapter 40, verse 7, and then Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, God did this on purpose. It says the same thing in both of them. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Amen. Amen. So this word we know is God. I have right now with me God. Amen. His word is established in heaven. We're going to be judged by the things written in the book. That's why in church it sits on a pulpit. It's higher than anything else. The man's standing here, but he's God's vessel. That's why the, this sits on a pulpit. Amen. It's God's word. We have This is the closest thing we have until he comes to get you and I. And prove it to me, preacher. Get down and out, have a bad day, and, and, and you haven't dug in that Bible yet, and open that thing up, see if it don't stir your heart. Have a real good day, be on a mountaintop, doing all kinds of good. You can feel the Holy Ghost of God. Open up that book and read it and see if it don't even get even better. Hey. Hey, Amen. It's God inspired. And in His Word, the Holy Ghost likes this book. Hey, Amen. And hey. that's why people, so many people say, we come through Bethel. I can feel the Spirit of God. I can, things are going on. I know it's true. I know it. You know why? Because Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, like this brother said, ain't nothing like them. Why? Because the Word of God. It is preached and it is taught in its correct manner, in the way that God would have it to be. It's inspired. He gets the glory for it. It's His Word. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So when He used this here, this word, word, we're understanding that He is, that John is saying, Jesus is the Word. And He's Amen. incarnate in the flesh. We beheld His glory. We seen Him. Jesus Christ is God the Father's thoughts in the flesh. And He comes to give it to us. Amen. Praise God. Ain't that Amen. Question three says, what things does light symbolize in John 1? So then we see, jump down, he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. Now he says, watch this, all things were made by him, Jesus. And without him was not anything made that was made. Me and my wife, I just this just come to mind. I showed this to my wife last night. Uh, even in the Old Testament, you see... The Trinity in the first three verses, he says in Genesis 1, he says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, God the Father. And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit. Notice, Spirit is not always a capital S, but in verse 2 it's a capital S. It says, And the Spirit of God, there he is, Holy Ghost, Spirit, Holy Spirit, moved upon the face of the water. Now watch it, verse 3 says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, let there be light, and but then he says, uh, was light, and now he says, and there was light. There's Jesus, the Trinity of God in the first, uh, in the first three verses. They said, there's so much here, we really haven't been able to impact. So this question here is saying, what things does light symbolize in John 1? He's not talking because the next couple verses he says, uh, and four says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. He did not create light. God did not create light. He didn't say, boom, light bulb. He created the moon. He created the sun. We know that. That was on the fourth day of creation. But look what it says. It says, in him was life. So he is like, he didn't create life. He took a body of Adam and he breathed in the nostril and became a living soul. God is light. He is light. Because look at the next verse. It says, and the life was the light of men. He ain't talking about a light bulb. Amen. Plug a light bulb into my ear and then all of a sudden it shines. So he's referring here to, to salvation. He's referring to life within itself. He's referring to a spiritual understanding. 
when I was younger and thought I was saved, I knew the name of Jesus. I had what I would call now more of a mind knowledge of God. All the things that I had heard as a child and them things, it was more of a mind knowledge. But when I got born again, when I repented of sin and I accepted Christ, I now have this spiritual understanding inside of me that God is light. And the only good thing to inside of me, like Paul said, is God, the light. The light, amen. And that's why the darkness comprehends it not, amen. So the light was not created, amen. He's always has been and he always will be. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews that our God is a consuming fire. They make up heaven to be this all white fluff fluff thing. So I, don't, I don't believe so, amen. Uh, our God is a consuming fire. You ever looked at fire? Fire's red and it's got some yellows in it, amen. And every now and then it gets a certain temperature, it turns blue, amen. Fire is just fire. God is light. It says in heaven there is no light. There ain't no light bulb, no cell phone, no tablet. Ain't none of that nonsense, no TV, televisions, amen, hell vision, hell phones. Because God is the light. What does that mean? God's the light and we're in Him. It ain't us that God sees. We're in the body of Christ, amen. Ain't that wonderful? So what things does light symbolize in John 1? Spiritual understanding, life itself, salvation for those that's been born again. Amen. Amen. He is salvation. He is that gives who that gives life. What does it mean, question four, what does it mean to be followers of the Father? To be followers. We see this in Ephesians. Now we're jumping over in Ephesians. It said, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Uh, in the Greek, this means imitators. It means we imitate God. That's why it's so important to have good pastors, and have good deacons, amen, good leaders of the church so that we can imitate them, that we can look at them. When, when a babe in Christ starts off, he don't know this book like the men of God are supposed to, amen. They're not going to know everything. I'm glad I had a good pastor. I had Sonny Mo. I, I'm not, I don't worship him. I, don't, I, I thank God. I praise God for him, amen, for men and women, amen. I was, I was asked a while back about uh, about having old people in the church. You need all of them. And, and Brother, Brother, uh, Brother Rick Prophet was right on point when he preached about uh, leaves, amen, a type of a people, a, a type of church, and how you need young ones and babies and old ones and mid-aged ones and how it paints a, a beautiful picture. The Bible says that the women are so, the older women of the church are supposed to be teaching the younger women of the church. How, what's the best way, what is the best way to teach somebody by your actions, Amen. You can, I can, I can talk to you, and I can preach to you, and I can teach you, but you're going to learn more by watching. Amen. Amen. That's just how it is. That's what we do. Amen. Uh, that's just, that's just how it is. So we're supposed to imitate. So it says, what does it mean to be followers of the Father? We're supposed to be imitators of God. Amen. I wrote down this. Uh, look with me, John chapter eight. Uh, we ain't got to turn there. I'm just going to read this one verse. This is after. The woman, the adulterous woman, was caught in the very act. And they said, according to Moses' law, she's supposed to be stoned to death. But what do you say? He said, neither without sin, cast the first stone at this woman, right? John chapter 8, verse 12, he then says this. It says, then he said, to them same people, it says they put their stones down. He said, then he said unto them, I am the light of the world. Amen. He that followeth me, he said, followeth me, shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Amen. You'll have the light of life. You and I are supposed to follow in the footsteps of God. You and I are supposed to try and be more like Jesus. You know what Jesus was? Jesus, Jesus was not only a friend to sinners in this world and people that are doing wrong under viaducts and bars our present day and time and people that we know are doing wrong in any strip clubs and uh, doing all these things in casinos, gambling, and abortion clinics, and all this stuff that we know is wrong. We're not only supposed to be friends in them that our light might shine, but also in the church. See, Jesus also went inside the temple, amen, and he taught, amen. He taught people. He was an example to them, uh, amen. He loved sinners. You and I have got to do the same thing, following our footsteps. There's a little story about a boy. His daddy was got a real deep snow, and this daddy was walking through the snow, and the daddy was humbled when he stopped and he looked back. And he's seen this little boy. I just read this story the other day. But it said that little boy, he looked back and he was humbled to the thought that his little boy was, so he didn't have to step in the snow. He was walking in his daddy's footsteps. Yeah. It's because the snow was already pressed down. He said it humbled him to think 
that I always need to be watch what I'm doing because somebody is following in my footsteps. Amen. You and I, if we are following somebody that is living hypocritical, that is not living righteous, amen, it will send off a bad scent to this world. Amen. Amen. That, that's what's wrong with the church this day and time. I love the church. God loved the church. He loved it so much he gave his son and he died for it. But there's so many people that act, look, talk, smell just like the world. Amen. We're not supposed to. Jesus did not do that. Jesus did not look like the people of his time. Jesus did not act like the people of his time. Jesus did not do the things, though he was around them, and though he loved them, he came with one motive. Amen. To die for the sin of the world. And he expressed it in love. Amen. Amen. So you and I are supposed to be imitators of God. I want to be more like this book. I'm not ashamed of this book. I'll yeah. walk inside a store with it. I'll walk inside a restaurant. We got a big family and the tables are small and we ain't got no room and I got a big old book slapped right down the middle of it. Amen. Amen. I want you to put that in the car and make more space. No. Amen. That's the word of life. That's God. Why don't you want God with you? Amen. Praise God. Thank God for it. We're supposed to be imitators of God. What kind of walk, question five, are we to have that imitates that of Jesus. Look at him, two of it, Ephesians 5, and walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Amen. So the question is, what kind of walk uh, are we to have uh, that imitates that of Jesus? You and I are supposed to be self-sacrificing. Amen. We're supposed to lay down our lives for other people. Amen. We're supposed to let our light shine. Let our light shine. Amen. You and I are supposed to give of our time. We're supposed to love others when they're not lovable. Not kick a man when he's down. Amen. But help I lift him up and to encourage that person. That's what Christ did. Amen. Christ, Christ loved Judas Iscariot, though he knew he was the son of perdition. He loved Judas Iscariot just the same as he did Peter. Amen. As much as he did anybody else. Amen. Of the Sandrian or any of them. Uh, from, from the lowest to the highest, amen, Jesus come to love people, you and I have got to do the same thing. Don't mean we need to partake of their evil deeds and to do the things they, they, they do. But you and I do need to walk like God and be forgiving. Amen. That's a big one right there. You've got to forgive. The Bible says don't go to sleep upon your wrath. Amen. You ain't supposed to be bickering arguing with one and go to sleep upon your wrath. You are not supposed to do that. Amen. You and I have got to forgive. If Jesus Christ forgive you and you've been born again, you can forgive anybody of anything. I have suffered some very wrongdoings in my life. And since I've been saved, I've suffered even worse. And we've got to be forgiving. You know why? Because of the Holy Ghost, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We just learn to forgive. Well, we have got to, there's nothing like it. There is nothing more rewarding than forgiving people that has wronged you. Yeah. Amen. When they, just, just forgive them. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. And just go on. Amen. Amen. You and I have got to be more like God. He's forgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Question six says, what is said to bring God's wrath on the sons of disobedience? We didn't have these verses, but in chapter five of three through five in the book, it says, but fornication, uncleanness, covetous, let it not be named once among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, or covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Right there, it's clearly said. Sinful lifestyles. Sin. God says, let it not be named once, but you have an advocate the Father. Ain't you glad about that? Hey, he says, he says, He's faithful and just, amen, to forgive us of our sin. Uh, amen, if we confess our sin. I'm glad I've got an advocate. I fall, I mess up, I do wrong. I don't do these things all the time like I should. I'm trying my best to, but God makes the difference and you and I have got to walk in the steps of Jesus. Amen, the best we can, when you fall, get up and go on. Amen. <coughs> and we're already running out of time. Question 7 says, what happens when we walk as children of light? You start having discernment. You start having discernment from good and bad. Amen. From um, 
holiness and evil, from good and bad, amen, and your light starts to shine. I'm telling you, every time I walk in Walmart and I feel like, I feel like ain't nobody around me. I try to get close to somebody and just walk the other way, trying to witness somebody, trying to somebody to track or something. It's just, it, 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 that's what happens. The light shines in darkness. There's something different. Amen. So when you and I start to walk like God and be forgiving and love, I love righteousness. When you was lost, you love sin. I did too. And whatever sin you was doing, you wanted to be the best at it. Amen, because I did too. But once I got born again, I want to be the best Christian there is. I've heard it said one time that the best Christian among us is the best uh, repenter. I can understand that, but, I, but I, I think it's the one that stays in his Bible reading. I think it's the one that stays in prayer. I think it's the one that loves righteousness. I love righteousness. I love knowing I don't have to look at that hoochie mama walking past me. Amen. I don't have to stare at that knowing she wants that attention. I, I'm, I'm glad to know that I don't got to feel like I need the next biggest boat. Amen. The next best car. Amen. The, the next biggest house. I don't need to put a new roof on because my neighbors did. Amen. I love righteousness. I want you to know I've been with God. Hey, man, there's nothing like God. That's like when we said about them celebrities. Some celebrities you can't get close to because, because they have security guards and things. But God said he was full of grace and he allowed to be around them. You and I have got to be full of that same grace that somebody might see something different. Amen. That somebody might want, uh, amen, what you and I have. Amen. And that's what it's all about. Praise God. All right. All right, let your light shine, amen. When we walk as children of light, our light shine. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. You and I have got to shine, amen, that others might see. Question 8 says, what are the two parts of Paul's dual command about darkness? We see it in verse 11. It says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You and I are to have no fellowship with sin. What's the point of going to a party, everybody drinking and smoking and cursing and listening to ungodly music and you just sit right in the middle of it? Amen. It ain't going to do you no good. It's going to fester in your heart. Yeah. I'm telling you, I got, I, I'm preaching tonight. God, give my points. I ain't got alone with God. I'm telling you I did. It's, it, it was dark in there and I'm praying and seeking God to give my three points just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. I opened up the door and this song, Cadillac Song 22, did nothing in my life but stay true. It's an old rap song I used to listen. I ain't thought about that thing in years, but just like that crosses my mind. Come on, why? Because the devil, he wants to stop you and I from being spiritual. He wants you not. So think about this so much more. When you do something for God, your flesh will chase you. The devil will chase you. Amen. How much more if we're saturated and sitting in the darkness ourselves? Remember, we've got to be around them and tell them of Christ. When I got saved in my family, they're still lost. I would show up, I'd slap my Bible right on the, and I knew it was Super Bowl or Derby, and I knew we were going to be drinking and smoking pot and all them things, and, and, and ungodly music, but I'd walk in and I'd set my Bible down on the coffee table. Sometimes I won't say nothing at all, just sit there. You know why? Because the light shines in darkness. But once a little bit of time went, went by, Noah's it was getting that time, people start rolling up, amen, they start cracking up their bottles, it's time to go. I've said my part. I've done my part. You've got a, a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. Uh, we have got to let our light shine. Amen. Uh, 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 amongst others. So we can't have no fellowship, but rather you and I need to expose. He says to reprove. We need to call sin for what it is. Amen. John the Baptist said, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Amen. Can I tell you, adultery is adultery. You're cheating on your husband. Why are you looking at pornography? Uh, the Bible says that you look upon a woman lust, you committed adultery in your heart already. Sin, sin. Some people don't like that, but it's true. It's, just, it's what it is. Amen. A lie is a lie. Amen. It's just the way it is. Stealing, stealing. Amen. And you know, a sin is not always just an outwardly thing. It's not obeying the word of God. Doing the things we know we're supposed to. Not even showing up to church with a right heart. You can show up, you know you can show up at church and sin by not being in the right heart for it. I'm glad you're here. I want you to be here. But you need to come for God. Amen. He makes the difference. Amen. Uh, so we need to have no fellowship with darkness, with the sin of the world, but we rather need to reprove it. Amen. Question 9 says, what does it mean that darkness is, is unfruitful? It said in, in verse 11, it said the, that it had no uh, dealings with the unfruitful works of darkness. What does that mean? There, there is no profit. There's no reward in sin. 
You know it like I do. If you've ever been born again and you trust Christ and you dip off in sin, there is no reward in it. It says in the Bible, it says that sin, sin uh, has its joy for a season. The Bible also says that there's a way which seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Sin don't bring no pleasure to your life, and you know it. I know it, and you know it. It don't. There's no pleasure. But in righteousness, knowing you're living for God, knowing you're trying your best, right? You ain't making him by your works. You just accepted Christ and the blood of Jesus has covered your past, present, and future sins by the grace of God, that same God, full of grace. And when we trust him because of that, there's nothing like walking in the glory of God. Amen. You and I need to not have fellowships with the world. There's no profit in it. There's no reward in it. Amen. And lastly, the question, last question says, uh, amen, let me, let me give you this. I wrote this down. Sometimes just shine and don't speak. Some of us sometimes are trying to witness to people and our words over speak. I've had people at times I've walked up to them just shook their hand and watched goosebumps run up their arm. I know don't, I don't need to say nothing at all. God has already done something. Sometimes we just got to be still and let God be God. Amen. Sometimes our words can override uh, our, our, our butt, so to say. Uh, amen. And we can mess and booger the things of God. If sometimes our presence is is what shines. It didn't, say the, it didn't say our words, but it says the light shining in darkness. Amen. And the word is the light, so if you're speaking anything, it needs to be Bible because it's the only thing, amen, that don't return void. Amen. Now lastly, last question 10 says, what is the ultimate effect of our light shining in the world? It exposes darkness. Amen. It exposes darkness. When you and I love Jesus Christ, when you and I come in this church, and we leave here, when service is over, when we go out, if you go to Cracker Barrel, wherever you're going to go, a Walmart, you ought to make somebody uncomfortable that wasn't in church. Amen. You know why? You've been around the things of God. Yeah. Hey, man, I like being around the things of God. I'm confident and I'm sure where I'm going. And God left us here that we might reach other people, that they will know that they can go to heaven too. If they repent of sin, trust Christ, our Lord and Savior, profess Him. Amen. Death, burial, and resurrection. It's kind of like, uh, it says, what's the ultimate effect of our light shining in the world? It's kind of like this. I'll give it to you this way. My kids, I love when mama says, go wake them up. First thing I do is I bang on that door real loud. And the second I do, I open the door and flip on the light and they do this. Their little peepers opened up for just a second, but they turned sideways. But they saw the light. They saw the light. And what do they do? Eventually, they wake up. Eventually, they get all that boogers and stuff out of there. You know, the beams and the moats. Amen. Praise God about all that judging stuff. But you and I, they'll wake up and they, they kind of they start seeing. That's the way we got to be with people. They see our light. The Bible says, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Amen. I was made perfect in an instant. When I received Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was made perfect. Right there. But my flesh ain't. My soul saved. My spirit saved. But I ain't. My flesh fails. I, I hate my flesh sometimes. I can't wait till I get to heaven. I ain't got to deal with the temptation of the flesh. But you and I need to let our light shine because other people's going to see it and they'll see what we've got. What we, man, I'm telling you, it ain't too late. It's not too late. I know there's a great falling away. I, I know people are falling away from the truth of the word of God. But if you and I will love righteousness, if you and I will chase righteousness, if you and I will love God and love doing what's right and wrong, I'm telling you, I believe God could bless America. I, I believe uh, I just got the Holy Ghost of God. I believe it. Because God can. Why can't he? If he's God, why won't he? If you and I would just let our light shine, the next time the devil tells you to do something, don't be weak. You have God. Hit your knees and pray, Lord, help me. He'll do it. He'll show up every time. He'll show up every time and he'll help you. Now let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. God is the light of this world. And if God is in you, let him shine. Amen. Let him shine. Amen. You and I can shine all through summer. You see these Christmas lights on houses and cars and in places. Let your light shine all year long for Jesus Christ. Read about the Christmas story in the middle of summer, in the middle of spring. Love it every day of your life. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we humbly bow before you. God, we thank you for another opportunity You've been behind the sacred desk. Father, we pray, God, that you bless each and every one, Father, that's here this morning. 
God, may our light shine for you. May you help us, God. We fall short. But if you give us that touch, Lord God, and we just trust you. You said if two agree, Lord, touching anything, it shall be granted. Father, I pray each and every one here, God, that their heart, Lord God, might be racing and patient and burdened for you this morning, that they'll start saying no to sin and yes to righteousness and making a difference in this lost and dying world. In Jesus' name, amen.